What's up everyone and welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. Today on the table we have another Game of Thrones a card game second edition tournament video for you brought to you by these awesome backers from patreon.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. If you want to donate click the link in the description below to help support the channel. In this match we have Sean playing Targaryen Reigns of Castamere. And on the right we have Daniel playing Targ Banner of the Kraken I believe. Oh good. Sean on the left is from our, I guess, Hamilton area, Black Knight Games store meta, playing with us local lately. And then on the right, uh, Daniel from the Kings in the North podcast, as you see, wearing that shirt, like a few others have in this video series, and I'm sure you'll see that shirt more. They drink and they know things. Uh, they got their own podcast. You can check that out. Uh, I believe they post it in the Facebook group, uh, but you can find it on Facebook in general, Kings in the North. Game of Thrones second edition podcast. For setup on the left, we got Danny Rose Road and a one cost Chud Targaryen loyalist. The dream setup, quote unquote, uh, as best you can get, I guess, uh, compared to the Tywin setup of uh, similar cost and card ratio. There, uh, we have Calm of Westeros in a time of plenty. On the right for setup, we have Drogon Doria, a Lord's Port shipwright, and a sea bitch. So it sounds like uh, Sean on the left, the Targaryen Reigns player, has one initiative. He's chosen Danny to go first. And they're both going to draw three cards off Time of Plenty. And he put an orange token there on the plot, which I believe is signifying, if I remember correctly, just based on the colors he's used before, that is military claim. It's reduced by one against him using the Calm Over, rest, rest, yeah. Calm over Westeros plot effect. So we are in the second video here of round three of the Swiss out of six rounds. Two videos per round are getting posted right now. Plus, we have a live stream video up in the playlist on the channel at Rob's Gaming Table on YouTube. Uh, you can see the entire Canadian Nationals coverage for Game of Thrones, the card game second edition uh, in there, including two live stream videos that we did the day of. And these are videos that I used extra cameras for recorded on the side. Thanks to help from my awesome wife uh, who helped me out here running around putting cameras down while I was playing. Uh, and uh, helped run the live stream. So you can go check out all the coverage there in the playlist. We'll keep putting videos in that same playlist. Like I said, two per round for Swiss. And we got a couple rounds, uh, a couple games out of the top eight per round. And uh, I recorded the finals uh, on a separate camera. I don't, I haven't looked at the footage, so I don't know if it's any good. Uh, but uh, probably is a bit better quality than the live stream. So I probably, pending on time and other things that come up, I should hopefully get to voice that over. Uh, so you have an alternate commentary track for it, and I'll post that as two separate videos to cut the matches up, make it a smaller video so people don't have to watch through like a seven hour video, uh, or scrub through one to find the matches. So subscribe if you're new here, hit that little alarm bell button beside the subscribe button if you're uh, not sure how that works. YouTube only sends out notifications randomly uh, to let you know your content creators that you're subscribed to have posted videos, but if you want to see when all the videos go up and be notified every time we go live, uh, on the channel with live streams, you can do that by hitting that little uh, bell notification icon uh, after you click subscribe. So we now uh, we now believe that uh, Sean, the Targ Reigns player on the left, is playing Flea Bottom since he has thrown in a Second Sons, a card that was laughed at. Nobody really played. I didn't see them in many Targ decks that I played against, or even online, or here commentating um, until Flea Bottom's out. Now that card seems. Uh, semi-broken so he's most likely gonna try to cycle it uh, which has that discard effect I don't think he's putting any bestow on it yet but uh, seems like he's past that point yeah and he's played Eerie or Irie or however you want to say this one I R I R I R R I Eerie so I always said it when I read the name in the book but uh, who knows now and there's the Eerie I don't know. Location. Osha, Asha. You never know. You don't know what's going on anymore. All right. So uh, Rigal's out there too. So danny has got her little stand ability uh, after she wins. And on the other side, we got Vic, duped up, ready for some intimidate, going first. No challenges. Go. And it looks like Danny, the Greyjoy, or sorry, the. 
Targaryen banner of the Kraken player on the right side there who went first has shown the past uh, his challenges. I'll just no 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 rethink it all. I don't know. I thought you didn't bestow because you were keeping one, but she you paid her for two. Yep, I paid two for her. Okay, so it looks like Danny has decided to not pass on his challenges. He thought there was money left, but there is not. Might have been thrown off by that uh, token there on the plot card, maybe. Thinking that was some gold left. I'm not sure, but uh, he realized Eerie was played using the rest of the gold. There was no bestow used. So no standability from Eerie at this time. Just played out as a chud. But uh, she can be brought back in with Fleet Bottom, and uh, you can put money back on her at that point if you have any. So Intrigue for one, coming in with uh, Doria here. Danny standing, minusing the strength by one. And Sean there on the left, checking his uh, schemes deck, I believe, there to see if Reigns uh, should be triggered. And he looks like he's going to trigger it on the defense, throwing in Danny, winning, standing with Rygal off the effect trigger there. And the kneel on Victorian, so we don't have any uh, intimidate happening here going first. And Danny will draw for insight on the defense. So Sean, <laughs> Sean came out much better on that one, and uh, Danny is always harassing me about filming the games. He's saying it's the pressure of the camera, that's the reason why. But Sean on the left also doesn't so much like to be on live streams or really be filmed. Uh, so I appreciate both these guys being on camera, and they're having fun with it, obviously. Uh, so yes, thank you to both you, Sean and Danny, for being in this, this game, no matter which way it goes for either of you. So it was fun for me to watch, that's for sure. <laughs> You can't always win every game. Huh? I've learned that, especially on camera. I've lost plenty of games on here. You guys have seen it, and I have to commentate them. So <laughs> that's even worse. <laughs> yes, yes, it does. <laughs> All right. So I think we have a... M oh. Intrigue challenge, it looks like, here with uh, Rygal. Coming in for three, but uh, Sean being a gentleman here, reminding uh, Danny that that uh, Lord's Port Shipwright will be minus one strength if he goes in the challenge since Daenerys is standing. So no point really defending with him. And Asha on the entry grab. That's a huge grab there. At least I don't have to worry about we do not sew. That's, that's all I'm glad for. After the two grades, the PTSD from the other grade joys that I've already played. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sean fearing the we do not sows. I am a player of that card. <laughs> I understand. <clears throat> so I believe we have a military here now of six. Coming in with the second sons. Could be blocked with Drogon, just blocking in a pose. And there it is, a pose. Claim. Claim of one, of course. Is he playing Fire and Blood? Nope. He's not going to kill the dragon. That's usually what you see Targaryen players do, is just kill those dragons. Seed their uh, dead pile and then play him back with Fire and Blood later in the game. Screw you around. But uh, Doria takes the hit. And Second Sons gets discarded at the end of the challenge phase there. Since they had no gold to, bes uh, to spend off them from Bestow. And it looks like uh, the Targreens on the left is up two to nothing. It seems like we got some discard happening here for taxation, which Flea Bottom makes uh, much juicier nowadays. Discarding on taxation, or even those two cost events now that uh, every faction seems to have, where you can pay a gold uh, to return it back to hand after fulfilling some conditions uh, from your in-house themes. Uh, putting cards in the discard from Taxation actually gets me worried when my opponent's doing it now. I used to love it to hear they were kind of chucking cards, you know, it's kind of inefficient, or putting cards in a discard pile instead of getting to play them. Um, but nowadays, yeah, uh, Danny Schaefer, the designer of the game, has uh, made it pretty juicy for us here, and made that actually a fun mechanic where you can purposely hold cards back round one and see them in your discard pile. Maybe your opponent forgets about them in there. Maybe you you know, you know, pop them out later and surprise them or get them back to hand using Flea Bottom or uh, those events. So it's kind of kind of fun now, uh, seeing taxation being used that way. Let me 
starting at your old one. At six, right? yeah. Ooh. Good challenge. All right. All right, we're going to plot two here. We got uh, Cannon Coppers and Cannon Coppers. Seems to be a very popular second turn plot right now. I feel like I'm seeing it in a lot of games in turn two or turn three, and both players hitting each other with it. Oh, yeah. It happens, but... So if you're a man who likes to play Varus Riddle, turn two is a good betting turn, I think, to try to hit those Cannon Coppers. Filthy's out. At least from what I've been seeing in this video series, at least. It feels like it. And the Gen Con series, uh, the North American uh, National Championships, also up on the channel. Felt a lot of, a lot of decks for doing that in the second round, hit, doing the double counting coppers. Alright, collecting three golds. So it looks like uh, first player this time is Sean, the Targreens player, going first there, marshalling a dupe on uh, Rygal. He's got a Plaza of Pride in play. That's the card that you can uh, kneel it and chuck a card to stand a card that costs X plus three or less higher. If I'm saying that right, basically a card that's uh, the same cost as the card you're standing or up to three costs cheaper. You can discard. Another way to fill your discard pile and uh, stand a character. something back to hand. Play out some, something else big. It looks like uh, <clears throat> all the stand in Targaryen. I know Sean loves those stand cards, and he right. just keeps getting more out of every chapter pack, it seems, and he's putting them all to work here. Just didn't get the gold on Eerie, but now I'm Plaza Pride, Rogel out there, and uh, Eerie is a stand card. Uh, he's got a lot of stands showing on the board. So he's going to get some extra use out of his characters he invests in. Help him get those sneaky range triggers and still do other challenges. Counting versus counting. Yeah. This was the plot. Tar versus tar. Yeah, plot one, that versus uh, versus that. I think you guys might have some of the same ideas. <laughs> okay. So we get uh, an Illyrio State Marshal on the Tar Crack inside on the right by Danny. I'm going. You're getting that econ on it. <clears throat> also just want to say thanks to everyone uh, who's been helping out on patreon.com recently we've got a kind of a surge of uh, backers there and I appreciate that a ton if you want to do that you can click the link in the description below but that helps a ton uh, it's definitely making my choice going to worlds a lot easier I'm traveling pretty far for it uh, and yeah, I'll be trying to get some videos for you guys from there. So if you want to help support the channel uh, and help offset some of that cost of going to Worlds and uh, even other tournaments in general and buying equipment and upgrading equipment, trying to get the channel quality up, you can always do so. Click in the link in the description below. But yeah, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's done it recently and all the ones who've been here for the last year. Back in the channel, there's some of you have been here from the start. I appreciate it a ton. Yeah, and it uh, means a lot. Definitely means a lot. Keeps me motivated for sure. And makes things a lot easier. Surprise, Silver Steve. Things happen. Every little bit helps. All right. All right. Drogon has a dupe now. <clears throat> Z bitch has a target. That Plaza Pride. You want to use it before it's used. You can steal it, but it's useless after it's snelt. So you gotta watch who does their action first here. Or who takes first actions? That's kind of important in this situation with Sea Bitch. Uh, I'm like super stressed after that uh, jump challenge. That's awesome. So it seems Danny's already thrown off the uh, Tart Kraken player by that first round there. Sean's kind of slapped him around a little bit. I think he means uh, walking into that reins in the first round. So we have a 10 strength intrigue coming in. Daenerys is knelt, but uh, if there was only a way to stand her up and get her minus one strength ability kicking in. Hmm. If Danny doesn't want that to happen, he's going to use Sea Bitch to steal that Plaza of Pride. 
But uh, first action goes to uh, Sean, actually, on the left after declaring attackers. So if he wants to do it right now, he can do it. And there it is. He knows. Got to do it. So Ego gets uh, chucked there to stand Danny. <clears throat> so now minus one strength. Any characters uh, on the opposing side that are going to go in here on defense. And Nightmare's on Danny, though. But that just, I guess, helps him oppose it using the Lord's Port ship right, I guess. Which he could have also used to <coughs> kneel Plaza of Pride, which... I might have been all over. Whether you have Seabitch out there or not, I mean, it's his only intrigue icon, so maybe you want to keep it up so that you can do an intrigue challenge of your own, but when you got characters like Eerie across the board that can easily block that Lord's Port ship right, you know, I just, I just say use it. That Lord's Port ship right is definitely not going to stop a range trigger, that's for sure. At least in this board here. And Dan uh, picking the very time efficient method of presenting his hand here for his opponent to grab a card for Intrigue. One of my favorites of how to keep the game going fast. But I guess he's doing it while Sean's doing other stuff on the other side, trying to figure it out his range trigger, so I guess it's not that bad. <laughs> well, I'll see how quickly he picks the cards back up and uh, gets them going. But I always think it's funny when players lay all their cards out like that, then they like get hooked under other cards on the table and they accidentally flip other cards, mess up their board, drop a card, accidentally show their opponent a card, you know, all this kind of silly stuff. and. Takes them a few seconds to even put them down on the board, and sometimes there's not enough really room for it. Right. I just think it's very inefficient. But it's still kind of funny. I, I don't know where it came from. I, I don't know if there's another card game where people do it, but something new I didn't, I didn't really see in first edition Thrones, but I've seen a few players do it here in second edition. So it looks like he's using wheels within wheels uh, to grab the Orion Jones event there. The Iron Bank uh, has its due, and uh, he chucks the Dragon is No Slave, which is one of those two-cost events I was talking about earlier, where he can get it back out of his discard pile into his hand after he wins a challenge with, I believe, Danny or a Dragon or something like that, pays a buck, puts it back in hand. I'm just hoping they don't put Dragon No Slave back in my hand. Now, it is kind of funny. I played on a casual night uh, before Canadian Nationals. And uh, Sean came up, grabbed my scheme deck out of nowhere while I'm playing a game, and just like browses through it. Even though he was earlier talking about how, you know, we're all opponents for Canadian Nationals, that kind of thing. Just grabs my scheme deck on the deck I said I was working on for Canadian Nationals. Just browses through it. And I remember making a comment on Wheels Within Wheels uh, when he saw that. And uh, here he is playing it. Which is a good call. I think it's a very good, uh, a very good plot. And uh, especially in Targaryen, they usually play higher events, so I can see why Sean would go that route. That's definitely a, definitely a better call. I think it won't turn out better in a Targ deck, I'm sure, than how I felt with it on the Greyjoy deck on the day. I mean, it's a nice look for those We Do Not Souls. Maybe grab a Risen when you're in a jam later in the game, but... Yeah, it's just... Eh, it was okay. It was okay. It's kind of card draw, I guess. <clears throat> so it's alright. But if you don't put enough events in your deck, you may whiff. You may whiff. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Not in this match. <laughs> in one of my matches, you'll see. <laughs> Looks like we got a military challenge here with Second Sons. Blocked again with Drogon. Again, like first round. No attachment to remove uh, with uh, Viserys Targaryen there, so no point in killing him yet. You get the dupe off Drogon, but uh, he's going to kill the Lord's Board Shipwright. Poor guy, wasn't used to his fullest, I believe, but. Uh, <laughs> I don't seem to be getting much of my other location control, but. Okay. Do have so um. Fast challenges? Mil? So now Miltier here with uh, Victorion. Coming in for five strength. Well, actually four with Danny standing. No defenders. But it won't be enough uh, Intimidate there to take Danny down since she's five strength. He's only winning the challenge by four here on a post. Um, neither do I. Okay. Uh, no reactions for me for losing. 
Flame is the oh, Targaryen loyalist there. We got the renown. Wait, intimidate Danny. Uh, I don't think he won by five. Oh, Danny was nightmares. Danny was nightmares. My bad. My bad. I take it back. I take it back. Delete that comment. I see you typing. I usually catch it later. I usually. But I do appreciate you guys leaving comments below. Let me know what I did miss. I do read them. And it makes sense. I do miss things for sure. Um, and I'm, it's cool to hear you guys catch them. And then it helps people in the future when they're watching the videos. If they have questions, they can scroll down in the comments. And I recommend doing that after you watch the video. Don't do it right away. Because sometimes people congratulate the player who won in the, in the comments I noticed. Or talk about how bad a certain player played or how horrible the match went for a certain player and uh, that's good reading after for people so just a warning don't go down in those comments I, I tend not to post my own comments uh, down in there <clears> so people see right away I'll usually do it later um, just because you know it gives people a turn to watch it. I don't want to spoil anything or anything like that so that's my recommendation in the future read the comments after you watch the match <laughs> the comments are dark and possibly full of spoilers So looks like Sean got rid of a copy of Drogon there in Taxation, uh, player on the left. <coughs> and we're moving on to plot three here. Trading with the Potoshi, giving three gold to the player on the right, and heads on spikes, flipped by the Tart Kraken player. High initiative plot, makes sense. He's a little more power rushy, looking to get that extra power grab off his plot cards. And he's chosen the Targ Reigns player to go first. And gets a copy of Fire and Blood. I've been really unlucky with them. You get your three gold, not four. Yeah. Oh, you still get three gold from this. <laughs> uh, Alright, so draw two. Still managed to get a good card. That's interesting. That changes things quite a bit. Uh, so 11 gold to work with here on the uh, left side plus a, a Lero's estate there uh, trading actually kind of for a slightly different reason uh, I'll kneel that and Cal Drogo's on the board <laughs> dun 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 with a dupe. Still not bad. Still not bad, no. So that was five gold. So it looks like both boards are pretty good uh, for Valor's coming up soon. I'm sure both players are playing it. The Kraken banner on the right is probably there to get you some extra saves and a little bit of location control. Uh, but he's not really seen any of those iron mines at this time. But he has Vic out there with a the dupe and Drogon. So he's one more power on Vic to get that extra save in case of that, you know, double Valor or back to back Valor. Um, That's the reason I play trading. And we have Astapor getting four gold on the bestow, which can be knelt to uh, reduce the character by four strength during a challenge. Just like that. One of my favorites to steal with Sea Bitch or a Dagmar cleft jaw. Let's see if uh, that uh, comes into play here with that Sea Bitch that's been sitting around there uh, collecting dust since the uh, first round. Or since setup, actually. Maybe Danny can steal that uh, Plaza Pride, which uh, would have been nice to use with Victorion, but now with Astapor out there, uh, that just makes Vic stink, really, because you know he's going to be the target of that minus uh, four strength to prevent any intimidate shenanigans. And you have to be careful, Astapor can be partnered with some burn, and Danny's the minus one ability we see right now. We can see a, pre a pretty gross uh, Fire and Blood turn, not Fire and Blood. Not fire and blood. What's the Tark plots? Ah, can never figure it out. Can't remember all the damn names. Blood of the Dragon. Blood of the Dragon is the damn plot I was trying to remember. The minus one strength to all non dragon characters, and they're killed if their strength equals zero. Asapor works great with that. Deny me the stand for a round. Not sure if uh, Sean's playing it on the left here. 
But in general, just helping with Reigns of Castamir, that ass of is good for that too. And Cal Drogo is now on the other side of the board, but no duplicate it looks like. Helps get uh, extra military. He's got his own Plaza of Pride out now. No need to steal it. Stealing that ass support would be nice. I think Dane's got the tools here. He could really uh, do some damage, swing it around, but he is going second. That could be a problem with some of these triggers here. But he is going to see bitch ass support. And he passes over some generic paper tokens and keeps his uh, pretty gold tokens. I guess he doesn't want his opponent touching his gold. I mean, who does, really? Keep your hands off my gold, man. So Sean can't abuse Aspor. He still could do some damage, but now he has the disadvantage of running into an Aspor. That's what you get. So if uh, Danny can turn this game around here, he's actually in the lead. Um, but if he wants to, I guess, push harder and do some damage, this is the turn to make it happen. Let's see if he can uh, can do it here. Tart cracking up four to one right now. So we do an Intrigue here of three. Danny's standing, so the opponent's characters will be minus one, which there are none with Intrigue. So we could have a range trigger here. We've already seen the Neil plot burnt and wheels within wheels. Could use a stand plot. Uh, I'm not sure what else. Wildfire maybe, but I don't see that happening either. What else does he have in there? Copy heads on spikes with the Varus Riddle. Action. Um, Sneak attack, flip into two claim? I, I don't know. We'll see here. I think Bear's Riddle is maybe what he's going for here. And he's going to chuck uh, Viserys, Viserys Targaryen to stand Rygal. See a Dracarys in the hand on the left there. <clears throat> Nightmares on Danny. And he does have one gold saved on the left there on top of his deck, so that Drakaris is possible. And uh, Danny knows when he stood that dragon, there's a possibility of that Drakaris. I mean, he could do it with Danny, but having that minus one on Danny standing hits uh, hits Drogon and hits uh, Victorion there to put him in that uh, burn range from uh, Drakaris. So no defenders. Looks like no range trigger. And uh, begging brother gone, which uh, yes yeah, would have been nice to stop the Rygal business. Um, would have been good just for Danny to get a entry guy caught on the board in the future. So yeah, Danny lets him take back a dragon is no slave with a goal. A little out of timing there, but uh, he's fine with it. It's still the same challenge. Not gonna be too strict. Which is why it's good when you do think about it. My buddy yeah. Felix is a lot better than you. It's hidden. Yeah, for sure. So he obviously doesn't want to use that uh, Dracarys this round. He decides to spend the gold to invest in a Dragon is No Slave. Um, and he may use it here. No one has any attachments on it, so he can do that minus two strength. And it looks like a military challenge with five here. Not sure who Astapor was used on there. But it was most likely used on one of those entry characters uh, that went on that challenge, maybe the dragon. And that's how he wasn't able to get his reins off anyway. But it is knelt now, and I did miss that. Unopposed military here. Drogon's dupe goes away for the kill. Should 
get a renown here on Drogon. <clears throat> or Cal Drogo, sorry. And a power challenge with Danny coming in for five. Now, this could be a problem. He kneels for five to defend. He only blocks and opposed. I don't know if he has a strength buff. Oh, no, sorry. He. But now we can see that Dragon's No Slave Blade. He's defending with six to five. Could block, get a Renown out of it. Get that extra power on uh, Victoria on there to put him in that second save effect. Like Sean on the left may be debating that dragon is no sleep. Okay. We could see a, hand, a card pitched from the hand of Danny on the right still to use his Plaza of Pride to stand uh, Victorion right back up. I'm not sure his dragon is no slave till the end of the phase, but I have a feeling it is. Uh, choose a character without attachments. That character gets minus two strength to the end of the phase as a challenge action. Yes, it is end of the phase. But it still would allow Victorion to be at three strength and uh, be able to easily push back challenges. So Cal Drogo going back to hand using uh, using the uh, Iron Bank uh, as it's due or whatever it's called. And, uh, but it was cancelled with Hand's Judgment to prevent the gold generation, but the character still goes back to Hand, and the duplicate falls off and goes to the discard pile there. He's gone. You just oh, that's right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, thank you. Go ahead. No problem. No problem. And uh, they do catch the Cal Drogo's gone, so he can't do a second military there with Rygal, uh, which Sean tried to do, but he was gone, so Sean may have made a mistake there. Looks like he was trying to get extra money for Jakaris. And now we got uh, Rygal Chuck to, for a Plaza of Pride to stand, Victorion. So it looks like Sean was trying to bet big there and risked it to try to burn Victorion. And uh, Danny didn't let it happen. And we get the uh, military coming in. Actually, power coming in, I think, there. And Victorion getting that extra. Oh, no, it would have been military if Rygal blocked. And we get a second military. Thomas nobody. I think. Maybe it was power. It went really quick there. But uh, the results of that uh, big risky play there by Sean now is uh, Cal Drogo's in his hand, a little safe. Maybe setting up a Valor here or just want to get him out of play. But he wanted that money. And, and, and I guess Cal Drogo's the best target. We'll see. But either way, on the right, uh, Danny with the Targaryen Banner of the Kraken deck is now sitting at, uh, looks like 11 power, if I've counted that right. right. Against one. And we get March into Fire and Blood. Uh, or not Fire and Blood. Blood of the Dragon. I did it again. Yeah. Blood of the Dragon. Yep. Instantly killing. Uh, the Ceres Targaryen and the March Rigel goes. And I assume Drogon's gonna get marched on the other side. Yeah, I believe I'll go first. Okay. To pre -march, I still need to march. Yeah. And yep, yeah, Drogon gets the march. And it looks like Danny on the right playing the march. One initiative has chosen Sean on the left to go first. 
So we did see how stealing that Astapor, I don't know how big of a part that played, but I think it did. It played a huge part. Uh, but I think the story there in that last round was that uh, Bank getting cancelled to prevent the gold generation to fuel those Dracarys. Or the Dragon's No Slave, actually. Which, I see what I was messing up on. The Dragon's No Slave costs money. He couldn't have played it. But that's maybe why he's trying to get all that money from uh, Cal Drogo was to play all of the events. And we would have maybe seen a few characters burn, but he has all those events now coming into this round with Blood of the Dragon showing, and so we could have some more characters killed here. I really gotta go to go P2. It's like it's chilling. I'm, I'm the same way. It's why I'm rocking back and forth because I'm just trying not to. Yeah, I know. I, I don't tend to be this bad. And it's like I feel bad for the camera. I don't want to take it up. To Sounds like uh, <laughs> Daniel there on the right is, uh, he drank, but I don't know if he knows things. He forgot to go to the bathroom uh, after drinking a ton, so he's, he's having a little trouble here. <laughs> and we get a Slaver's Bay port out there getting some gold. And that's going to be it played. Wow. And a crown on Victorion. Or, uh, yeah, Victorion Greyjoy. And uh, he gets burned. Dupes don't matter. Power's gone just like that. Wow. Sean building up for the burn turn here. Here it comes. Pain trains are coming. But is it too little too late? We'll see. No gold, right? No gold. So four gold saved on the right. No gold saved on the left, it looks like. And we got Danny versus Cal Drogo. Could see Danny get a couple uses here using Plaza of Pride. She doesn't have a military icon. So I don't see how she's going to get saved. I think he should just come in on the mill and try to kill Danny. He has no money to bring in any dragons out of the dead pile. I don't know if he even has any dragons in the dead pile on the left. Uh, Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, first player's on the left, so we got an Intrigue first coming in. Makes sense. Most likely going to be on a pose. That could be a range trigger, though. But the Neil plot has been burnt. It's been played already, so... Okay, um, action. Oh, Fire and Blood played here. But we got to watch out for the Astapor coming in on the burn. Okay. Uh, I don't know if bringing a character in is the best call here. And also Cal Drogo. <laughs> Cal Drogo going in on a challenge would actually be very dangerous too. So these uh, Blood of the Dragon turns, I usually just get scared and I see a lot of players do it, just pass. Sure. Oh yeah, that's real smart. No, I won't. I should have kept that thing. It looks like Fire and Blood was played, but he doesn't have a dragon in the dead pile. And he was going to play Iron Bank to bring Cal Drogo back, but uh, he would get plucked on the intrigue. <clears throat> And he's going to collect a bunch of money. What is going on here? Faction card Neil. He puts the event in the discard pile. Has a bunch of money. So uh, unopposed. Sorry, first reaction. He's going to trigger reigns here. And play Power Behind the Throne to stand Danny. Yeah, I saw that coming, but I couldn't. Yeah. We were going to start with entries. So. Unopposed. Claim a one. And instead of having him die. Yeah, there you go. And Cal Drogo going to the discard pile instead of the dead pile. So that's interesting. And it's going to token. That insight's going to refill the room. And power. And unopposed power challenge here. It's not looking good for the Targ Kraken deck here. And insight. And I'm Danny getting tons of cards here on the insight draw. Ooh. So Sean getting back into this thing here. Four power. He's got Danny on the board. Got a handful of cards. Danny on the right has uh, six, seven power. Empty hand. No characters on the board. Not seeing a flea bottom yet though, and I'm really a little annoyed by that actually. Wait, sorry. Is it six? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna give him cards. Give me the obvious choice. And he puts a 
Dragon is no slave into the discard pile there for taxation. So I'm going to get back later. I'm gambling with an empty hand. It's not looking good for Danny. Top deck in here. He's got to pick his plot with no knowledge of anything in his hand. Doesn't know what he's going to draw into. Hopefully it's characters that he can play and put on the board. And they both play a close call. Hitting each other's plot. Getting some extra cards here. Moving characters from the dead to the discard pile. And the Targ uh, Reigns player is going first. Again. And Victorian gets moved out of the dead uh, to the discard pile on the right. And it looks like Eerie was the one moved on the other side. So I think uh, it's looking in the favor of the Targ Rain stack on the left now. The uh, player Sean looking like he could turn this around here and really tighten the screws on his opponents. Depending on what uh, depending on what Danny drew, but I mean, we'll see, we'll see. So only gets one gold on the right for his uh, Slaver's Bay port since there's only one character right now in the dead pile uh, on the left. And uh, Viserion's out there giving Danny stealth. Daenerys, sorry, Daenerys stealth. Little finger getting some card draw. Classic card. <laughs> Sean on the left's complaining about not seeing Flea Bottom at this time. He's got tons of targets in the discard pile. And uh, Viserys Targaryen out there now for some uh, attachment control. And over to Daniel. Let's see what he can do here with uh, six, seven gold, I think. Yep, seven gold to work with. Plus an Illyrio's estate. Oh, well, he got a Rose Road to help him out next round, but it's not what he wants to see right now, I'm sure. Sir Jorah Mormont. What, what, can I see your uh, discard? Uh, your, no, uh, oh, my, uh, use file. My use file. Let's see. Auto the dragon. That's what I use. Yeah. Yeah. My use things are on here. And you have one of them. I have one of them, yes. <clears throat> and Eerie played out, so we know he's got a Rose Road in hand. Looks like he's choosing not to play and save four gold. Does he put some bestow on Eerie? Will she actually stick around or not? I mean, right now, Jora technically could win a military challenge, except that Astapor staring at him from across the table says, no, he can't. <laughs> Power challenge with uh, Viserys Targaryen here to start. Danny's standing, so... Uh, doesn't look like he can win in on the right. Can block some, block some on a pose, possibly. So power challenge one there. Uh, I think uh, we're at five to six right now. Maybe six to six, depending on what's in that pile of power there on the left house card. It looks like five, but it might be six. <coughs> so an entry with Danny using stealth. She's gained from Viserion to stealth uh, Sir Jorah Mormont. And uh, the card is chucked as an action there to uh, use Plaza Pride to stand eerie. And she'll pose for one, blocking on a post. That insight, man. What gets going? I wish I had her. Uh, military. And a military challenge of two coming in with Viserion. 
And he knows he can try to defend with Sir Jorah, but uh, he's just going to get his strength reduced. <clears throat> I bet he wishes he was sitting on those two nightmares he used, early on Dan he used earlier in the game on Danny. He has the gold for them. And that ass support is always a great target for that nightmares, let me tell you. <laughs> Unopposed here on the military challenge. So Yuri will die for claim. <clears throat> and we got uh, Plaza Pride trigger, trigger there on the left. Chuck a card, Stan Danny. Looks like it was an unsullied that was chucked there. <laughs> Danny on the right's getting spanked around here. Wants to quit the game and go play uh, Destiny in their tournament that's happening at the same time as this here at Canadian Nationals. But uh, no, nope, he's got to stay and suffer till the end of the video here. Okay, I'll move to Dom. Move to Dom. Dom to and dominance goes to Sean on the left. And Daniel uh, draw into anything here that can uh, help him out. Top taken again. And we get marched into Valor. Um, March player choosing to I'm go first. first. Uh, and March first, of course, so we can get someone out of play and not have them in the dead pile. Probably Daenerys, I would think. And it's going to be Littlefinger, actually. Maybe he's got another Littlefinger in hand. And everyone else to the dead pile. Sir Jorah Let's goes to March. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have about three, minutes. three minutes left in the game, uh, called by our judge. Yes. yes. Okay, so finish this round. Yep. Hopefully it'll be pretty quick. There aren't that many options. And it looks like, uh, based on the top deck of Jakars and a Iron Mines there, uh, Danny just uh, concedes. And congrats to Sean on uh, that turning around there and uh, basically crushing some big swingy turns there. That was pretty cool to see. Um, but yeah, not sure. Uh, what Dan could have done to turn it around there, but uh, or not make mistakes to lose that one. But you guys, if you saw anything that could have changed the game there, leave it in the comments below. Make sure you hit the like button on all these Game of Thrones videos so other people find these videos, find the channel, find the game while they're searching around on the YouTubes. But uh, either way, thanks a lot to everyone supporting the channel. Whether you do that just through watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, donating on Patreon, any of those above are all awesome. Thanks for being here, guys. Thanks for keeping me doing this, and I'll see you in the next video. Tons more coming.